Hi, this is Fani Renders, and in this section of the tutorial, we will be exploring some extensibility categoristics of ASP.NET Web API. First on the agenda is all about serving suitable types of content to different clients by making use of media formatters. We'll apply rate limiting to our API by making use of message handlers, and then also explore what filters are and how to create them. We are also going to learn all about the service resolver and its functionality to dependency injection. And lastly, we will explore the use of OData and how easy it is to apply it on our service. When a client makes a request for a resource, the request is accompanied with an accept header stating what format is expected. After the request is processed, a specific media type formatter converts the resource into the expected format. This process is called content negotiation. There are two media type formatters supported out of the box by ASP.NET Web API, which are XML and JSON. It's also possible to extend this collection with our own custom media type formatters, in which we will see in a moment. Clients usually include a default accept header as part of their request. Let's take a quick look at an example by comparing responses requested from Internet Explorer and Chrome. Here we have an API that returns a simple list of names. When we make a request to this endpoint from Internet Explorer, we see that the response returned is in JSON format. Doing the same request from Chrome, we notice that the response is now in XML format. This is because Internet Explorer and Chrome include an accept header of JSON and XML respectively. We can also explicitly serve back a specific format regardless of the type specified in the accept header by using message handlers. We will be looking at message handlers later in this section. Let's add a media type formatter to our bookstore service for supporting responses in CSV format. Inside the infrastructure folder, create a new class and name it Books CSV Formatter. In order to make this class a media formatter, we need to remember to inherit from the buffered media type formatter base class and implement the required properties. The two properties, can read type and can write type, allows us to control the types that can be deserialized and serialized by our formatter. For simplicity, we are only going to implement CSV export functionality for the book entity. So we set can read type to false and can write type to a conditional true. Next, we need to add the supported content type for this formatter as text CSV. We will do this in the constructor of the class by adding a new instance of a media type header value with the value text CSV to the collection of the supported media types. To make this formatter actually return CSV, we need to override the write to stream method. I've prepared some code beforehand to help us save a bit of time. Let's go through the code. We need to support multiple and singular book entities. So within the scope of a new stream writer, we do a check if the result is a collection or a single item. In the case of a collection, we simply iterate through the list of books, writing each book as a flattened string to the stream. If the result is a single book, we just write the flattened book to the stream. Do take note that the flatten extension method is a custom method we've created to flatten and convert our complex book data transfer object to a single line of string. Now that our CSV formatter is completed, we need to register it in the configuration. To do this, we need to go back to the Web API config class and add a new instance of the book CSV formatter to the formatters collection of the configuration. Finally, we are ready to build and test our brand new CSV formatter. So from Fiddler, let's request a list of books. Because we enabled security in the previous section, we need to remember to use the API over HTTPS, also specifying the encoded credentials in the header. 
Making a request to the Books API, we notice that the result is still in JSON format. This is due to the fact that we need to specify the accept header as text slash CSV. Now, when we execute the request again, we are getting a response formatted in CSV as expected. As a side note, it is important to remember if the client sends an accept header that is not supported by our service, it will automatically fall back to the default configuration. In this video, we have just learned how easy it is to create our own media formatter to allow books to be exported as a simple CSV response. In the next video, we will continue our journey of extensibility by taking a look at message handlers.